In this example, I'm going to simplify a cube root. We have the cube root of 16x squared y to the eighth. The trick here is to rewrite that radicand, the part inside the radical sign, as products of perfect cubes times other factors. Now if we look at 16, 16 is not a perfect cube, but 8 is. So we write 16 as 2 times 8. 8 is our perfect cube. x squared, well there's nothing we can do with x squared. But y to the eighth, there is a perfect cube embedded in there. If we write y to the eighth as y squared times y to the sixth, y to the sixth in turn is y squared quantity cubed. So we do have a perfect cube in y to the sixth. It's y squared quantity cubed. And our eight is two cubed. Now what we can do is use the product rule for radicals and rewrite this as a product of radicals. And I'm going to separate out the perfect cubes. I'm going to write it as the cube root of two cubed times the cube root of y squared quantity cubed times the cube root of the remaining factors which would be the 2, the x squared, and the y squared. Now these two perfect cubes simplify out. The cube root of 2 cubed turns into 2. The cube root of y squared quantity cubed turns into y squared. So we have 2y squared outside the radical and then what's left is that cube root of 2x squared y squared. Now we're going to look at another example of a radical where we're going to simplify and we're going to end up with an absolute value in our answer. We're going to simplify the square root of 12x squared y to the seventh. And like the previous example where we found perfect cubes, here we're going to look for perfect squares. Uh, 12 can be written as the perfect square 4 times 3. x squared itself is a perfect square. y to the seventh can be written as y to the sixth times y, and y to the sixth is the perfect square y cubed quantity squared. So we rewrite in the next step and separate the radicals. We have square root of 4 times square root of x squared times square root of y cubed quantity squared times the radical of what's left, square root of 3y. Now the square root of 4 turns into 2. We all know that. The square root of x squared turns into x, but we use absolute values. Now I have a note here. It says note that the absolute value bars ensure that the square root is a positive value. And that's exactly why we have to use them. Let's say x were negative 5. If x were negative 5, then x squared would be 25. And if we took the square root of 25, we'd end up with positive 5. Well, x was negative 5. How do we get negative 5 out of x? Well, we get negative 5 by using that absolute value. The absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. We need a positive answer. Now our other square root here is the square root of y cubed quantity squared. That turns to y cubed. And then we also have our square root of 3y, which we can't do anything with. So then our final answer is 2 times the absolute value of x times y cubed times the square root of 3y. In this video, we're going to rationalize the denominator of 6 over the cube root of 9x squared. The key step here is to think, what can I multiply 9x squared by to make it a perfect cube? Now 9 is not a perfect cube, but 27 is. So if we multiply 9 by 3, will turn it into a perfect cube. Also, x squared can be turned into a perfect cube by multiplying by x, because that will make x cubed inside the radical. So we multiply the top and bottom by the cube root of 3x and the cube root of 3x. And what we get is 6 times the cube root of 3x in the numerator. We get the cube root of 9x squared times 3x in the denominator by the product rule for radicals. And that denominator turns into the cube root of 27x cubed. And we still have our 6 times the cube root of 3x in the numerator. Well, the denominator turns into 3x. Because if we take 3x times 3x times 3x, we get 27x cubed.
So taking the cube root of 27x cubed gives us 3x. And then in the numerator, we still have our 6 times the cube root of 3x. Now we can do a little canceling here. 6 divided by 3 gives us 2. So we have 2 times the cube root of 3x over x.